one of the most difficult things to deal with in ministry and in life in general is something that we all have to deal with. It's been said that the only thing that you can count on is death and taxes. That's a little extreme, but uh, you do get the point. It's something that we all have to uh, face in various ways, but uh, we all have our challenges and our struggles in dealing with death. Now, um, several members of our family have uh, expressed their grief over having lost loved ones and over uh, other losses that they are familiar with. And so I felt that it was time that uh, just as we uh, try to uh, 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 learn as we go and improve on some of the things that we've seen practiced habitually or traditionally by church, uh, we want it to be a source of comfort. If a ministry has the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the comforter, then there should be evidence of comfort coming from that ministry. Uh, and so I would like to uh, offer this video to comfort those who have losses or who have experienced losses that they've not yet come to terms with or gotten proper closure with because see this too can be a source of oppression certainly of depression and we always talk about how depression begets oppression which begets possession but um, without getting into that aspect of it in particular we just want to look at some things uh, concerning the way we view death. And we know in this culture and in this society, death is associated with loss, it's associated with darkness, hence the wearing of the color black, it's associated with um, uh, bad things. Uh, and you say, well, of course it's death. Well, no, that's not how death has always been viewed. Ancient people, especially uh, the peoples of the Eastern Hemisphere of the world, have looked at death as a celebration time, a, a time of graduation, a time where you move forward from the limitations of the physical body and you begin to uh, make your transition over uh, into the realm of the spirit and return to the source, the creator and this is a good thing however because we are attached it's attachment we're attached to our vehicles to our clothes we're attached to our belongings our various possessions and of course we're attached to our loved ones and we should be however it's point of view and please know that um uh, this is not something I learned overnight. I uh, suffered some losses myself of loved ones that took some time to get over. Uh, my grandmother being one of those, my father also. But um, it was my point of view that had to change. And as I sought the Lord for help in how to deal with this aspect of ministry, um, you know, what do you say? Because I thought about when my grandma passed and, and when the old dude passed. There was nothing that could be said. I mean, you know, you can't bring her back. And I thought also that um, I was going to lose it, uh, especially when she passed. When the old dude passed, I didn't think I was going to lose it. And I lost my grip unexpectedly. And then when my grandma I thought I was going to lose it and I stayed cool which was interesting to me but again it's all about perspective when I thought about you, you know um, how to approach this and I sought the Lord for ways he took me back to that time uh, and even revealed to me that there were some things that um, I just had buried in my mind because 
it can seem as if the pain is too intense and fresh and um, you know it, it's not uh, um, allowing you to the pain it it it, it seems was it, it would not allow you to digest certain information so you throw it to the back of your mind you put it in your subconscious mind you bury that up under the quote unquote rug and you know just so you can deal with it which is part of what happens in trauma based mind control uh, the victim throws things in the back of their mind especially as children it, 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 it is a um, reflex of the brain to be able to withstand great trauma by compartmentalizing itself and this is what we do you know in, in a lot of traumatic instances uh, if you've ever been in a bad car accident I've never had that experience but I, I know some of you can relate if you've ever been in a bad car accident people say they don't remember certain aspects of the accident where they know they were conscious and awake that that's the compartmentalization of, of, of that the brain does. The brain will create a compartment to keep the most horrid memories so that they don't stay in regular rotation with your thoughts. And so as I thought about uh, you know how do we deal with death uh, I had to go back to that uh, time where uh, I lost uh, loved ones of mine it was my grandpa, my, my, my grandma, one year, and then the next year, my old dude. And, um, excuse me, in reverse, to my old dude, then came my grandma. And that time for me is such a blur. I can make a mistake like that because sometimes I'll try to think of what year it happened, and I won't be able to do so. But again, that, that's part of why we revisit things, why we look back. So that we can look at the present, which was pre-sent, and figure out how was this time sent to me? How did I get here? What happened? How did I end up here? And what that often requires is that we look back at um, our thought processes that occurred during a particular time. But now this is this is the main thing, though. You don't. Uh, want your loved one to leave you. I didn't want my grandma to leave me. Um, I didn't want my old dude to leave, you know. Um, which is a form of selfishness course you love your people you don't want them to leave here but it's the way you view leaving here and I'm not speaking to any one person in particular if any if I am it's myself but um, just a general re reworking of how death is looked at death should be looked at as a relief from uh, this test, the test of this life. It should also be looked at uh, when the person has lived a uh, long and apparently fruitful life. Uh, we should also be thankful that the Lord has obviously said to them, well done, good and faithful servant. And uh, he's ready for them to come home. Now, when he's ready for them to come home, they're rejoicing in the spirit. He's rejoicing in the spirit, okay? Because the Lord delights in the death of his saints. And that and that's a you know, that is not a scripture to be taken lightly. And no, it does not mean that he wants us all to die <laughs> and that he delights in taking us out of the game. But uh what what that means is that uh, when the Lord is calling his own home. Uh, he knows that he's given them a rest, a much needed rest, okay, because uh, uh, many people are stressed by this life. And then the elders are spared 
and that's Psalm 116 and 15. Okay, the Lord delights in the death of his saints. We'll look at that. But the elders are, are going to be spared some of the things uh, for which they're not prepared. And that's a good thing. And uh, that is the mercy of the Lord shining through. And of course, we don't always understand it. Because his ways are not our ways, they are higher. Isaiah 55 and 11. But Psalm 116 and 15, let's look at that real quickly. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. That's hard. But see again, what's the goal of this life? The goal of being here in the physical. The goal of being here is to uh, get prepared to be there. That's right. So we learn this is life is for learning like the Marvin Gaye song <laughs> but life is for learning and it, it's about a lesson as you and you know the lesson has to do with your free will what will you choose will you choose the Lord or will you choose to serve the world and the prince of this world but um, once that test is is passed uh, and once the Lord understands that you've learned what you're supposed to learn, then he's ready for you to come home. We don't stay here for each other's sake uh, entirely. Now we are a symbiotic creation. We need each other. We feed off of one another. Uh, people need people. But we are Here, each one of us to work on our own soul salvation and we are of course to help and aid one another iron sharpens iron confession one to another is good for the soul um, uh, you, you know um, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother we need that fellowship I'm not talking about that okay. I'm talking about when you come here, you come here to learn your lesson. And the lives of the people that are placed around you will play a part in that lesson. You'll learn from the lesson that they're learning by living their life. But we're all here to learn specific things and to do specific things. We have specific jobs to do. They're based on your talents. As the Lord gave uh, the uh, parable of the man with the servants whom he gave talents to. We are the servants, and the Almighty has given us talents. Now, have you spent your talents wisely? Or have you hidden them in the ground? Have you done things to uh, make an investment based on your talent and to see some sort of increase? Uh, this is the reason why we're put here, why we're given gifts, and why we're given time. We're given time to exercise those gifts to help to be an example to others as to not only, you know, to show how to live your life. Some people are here as examples of how not to live your life. Some people are also here uh, to be part of our challenge, to help to add to our challenge and us to be a challenge to them because it's holding up their soul salvation that they are. Uh, by their free will putting themselves in a position to be a hindrance or a stumbling block to another so you see how it's all linked and it's all connected okay so when a link comes out of that chain and it goes back to the uh, smith who formed it in the first place uh, it doesn't weaken this chain Okay, it's not supposed to weaken it. It's supposed to strengthen it. Uh, I remember Ice Cube had said in the uh, song Dead Homies, when it's a tragedy, that's the only time that the family's tight. And that's unfortunate because a lot of us don't uh, see our loved ones and uh, our, our relatives the way we should until there's a death in the family or until a so-called holy day, an unholy day, one of the pagan days, one of the holidays. So 
some people opt not to go to funerals because they're sad sad affairs the same way some people opt not to go to the family functions and events during the so-called holiday season because of what that represents but we have to see everything in the bigger picture it may make you uh, uh, sad or uncomfortable to be uh, at a funeral or awake or viewing however your presence may be just what cousin so and so need to see in order to be strengthened okay uh, same thing with the family functions again you're not gathering together I bet y'all ain't never sat around that table and talked about the Puritans and the pilgrims and the, 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 uh, uh, the Mayflower you might have sat around the table and talked about Mayweather but I bet you ain't never sat around that Thanksgiving table and talked about the Mayflower so my point is keep everything in proper perspective you know uh, a, a lot of things are done in this society to weaken the family okay the Lord has even allowed for death which he allowed for his son to get the keys uh, uh, of hell and death so death has lost its sting but the Lord has even allowed for death to be used as a means of bringing us together because the times have become so desperate and things are so drastic that it takes anything uh, by any means necessary to try to bring the family back together because we know as in the example of the Prometheus statues that, that we see in uh, various cities like Detroit and New York we know that the goal of the enemy is to tear families apart okay the goal of the enemy from the very beginning was to infiltrate the family line okay to cause havoc and chaos within the family line and to this day we're still seeing that occur so not only do we have to be on guard during life but also as we uh, gather together and celebrate death as we gather together we celebrate the graduation of a loved one now death and death the words both denote lack death is supposed to be a lack of hearing correct and death of course would be a lack of life right so again we're looking at the case of what we're calling a word okay I'm just going to pull up something on that real quick okay we call it death uh, of Germanic origin related to Dutch dude and German Todd interesting also to die in German die D-I-E is the and the is the uh, principle or a God principle like all and L and the comes from the host or the host or theos from the Greek so it's interesting that um, death and God have a relationship in the Germanic okay but um, death uh, is, is not a lack of something as much as it is uh, you know you lose six and you gain six did you really lose six you know you lose this form of life or you lose what we consider you know the greatest thing since pockets of sliced bread you lose uh, the ability to walk around in this flesh and get all of the jollies and good feelings that it has to offer and which some people are very attracted addicted and attached to those feelings okay but you trade those feelings which is lightweight jamming for true eternal bliss, true eternal joy, true eternal peace, this is cause to rejoice. When, uh, 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 you know, when the uh, death was preceded by sickness or by tragedy, it makes it that much harder. Because we say, well, why would the Lord delight in the sickness 
or in the violent death of one of his saints, one of his children, one of his beloved. Why would he delight in that? Again, we're, we, you know, we're looking at words and we are oftentimes using a very limited understanding of the meaning of the words. Okay. Um, the uh, usage of the word delight in this passage in Psalms 116 and 15 is not to denote that the Lord is happy to uh, take your life but that the Lord is happy to reconnect with you the Lord is happy that you made the right choices and that you are now returning home uh, with him and he is delighted when his saints uh, his servants are good and faithful and they do their work and when they do their work he's glad to see them come home and so should you but at the same time we're human and we have memories and thoughts and things that we didn't say that we wish we had have said things that we did that we wish we hadn't done things we didn't do that we wish we did but at the uh end of the day you have to view death as a stage in life what we call death is a change of the form of life that you live we live in the physical body but there's a spiritual reality we talk about it all the time the spiritual reality trumps the physical the spiritual reality is always in play it never forgets about you but we do forget about it especially in times when our emotional equilibrium has been challenged or the foundation of our emotions have been shake, shaken because of sadness, because of grief. So uh, for that reason, uh, I want to say a prayer of comfort to comfort those others. And I want to um, just say, uh, say a poem that the Lord put it on me to uh, write uh, you can feel free to use it if you feel so moved or to share it however you like I don't care I'll send it to you if you like it um, and it's called why Lord uh, but uh, first we'll say that and then we'll do the prayer and then we're going to look at uh, Bill Cosby and the news and we're going to look some more at uh, deliverance and SRA so the poem is as follows why Lord a believer suffered a loss they couldn't explain and began to exclaim why Lord do we have to endure a life so unsure and brief why Lord do you let children die causing unbelief and grief why, Lord, did you ever unchain the gates of the kingdom where evil does reign? Why, Lord, must I suffer the enemy's arrows that aim at my body and brain? Then the Lord heard their cries by Psalm 34, and the Comforter came to relieve them of pain and explain. As the comfort and warmth of the Spirit consoled them, ministered to and internally told them, the time you are here is just part of a lesson. After testing your faith, the Lord allows your progression. How can there be a testimony if there's no test? And overcoming a challenge shows you know that you've been blessed. And once you've done well and good and have fulfilled your fate, your loved ones should celebrate as they watch you graduate. The time you spent in life was a gift from the Creator to get to know the face of your Maker before returning to Him later. But for those you leave upon this world to carry your memory on, it doesn't feel like graduation. They need consolation because all they know now is you're gone. Though you can rest assured in time, I'll comfort them as I have you. And I'll renew their point of view and redefine all you've been through. So when they think of you from now on, there'll be less tears. They'll smile a while and reflect on what you've said throughout the years. 
and they too will graduate from saying, Why, Lord, did you take them from me? To saying, Why, Lord, to have had them this long was a gift, but I'm glad they're now free. Okay, we just want to touch and agree. We ask for strength, Heavenly Father, in the authority of the name of the most almighty, true and living Lord, King of all kings, Yahavasha, Yashava, Jesus the Messiah. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you bind to all who are listening and all who are grieving, all who have not made peace with their elders and their loved ones who have transcended. Uh, we ask, Heavenly Father, that you bind to them the spirit of shalom, that you bind to them the spirit of peace, that you bind to them, Heavenly Father, the spirit of your joy, for the joy of the Lord is their strength, and that you also bind to them the comforter, the Holy Spirit, and that you comfort them, that you comfort all of the loved ones who are mourning, the spouses that are mourning, the children that are mourning. Heavenly Father, that you let your grace and your mercy abide with them, that you loose a heavenly host of angels to go and to minister to them, to uplift them, to let them know that they are not alone. I ask Heavenly Father, the authority of the name that is above all names, the Messiah, Yahavasha, Yahshua, Jesus, the King of all kings. I ask Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, that you give their family favor. Heavenly Father, that you loose their family from any and every ancestral and familial spirit, from any and every spirit of grief or fear, and from any and every spirit of pain or torment. And I ask in the authority of the name of the most almighty and excellent Lord, King of Kings, Jesus the Messiah, Heavenly Father, that you uh, strengthen and embolden them, that you strengthen their family, and that you remove from their family line anything that is unlike you in any assignment of the enemy, any attempt to tear apart the framework of the family structure, Heavenly Father, I ask right now that that attempt be rendered void and powerless, Heavenly Father, and I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, that you bind the seven spirits as mentioned in the book of Isaiah to them and to their family members, Heavenly Father. The spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of the fear of God, the spirit of God's might, and the spirit of the Lord. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayer, for having audience with us. We thank you for your love, Father, for your grace and for your mercy. We praise you with the highest praise that we know. Hallelujah! And we thank you for now and forevermore. We touch in agreement as we've decreed it. We believe it. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, we do receive it, and it is so. Amen. All right. Okay, so we're going to jump into uh, the other two. Uh, I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your continued encouragement and support. Uh, I had a little issue getting settled in after uh, leaving my last location and getting my setup together to be able to uh, drop consistent videos. Uh, we, we believe that we've got that together now. So uh, I do appreciate your uh, long suffering and I appreciate your prayers. Keep them coming. This is a temple of the true Yahshua. This is Unplug'em. Brother Minister Theo will be back. <laughs>